The text that the calls, text for, that our calls for our attention this Lord's Day is our gospel reading from Mark chapter 13, where it says, But concerning that day and that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Most of you probably remember singing as a child this song. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. But I've got a question for you. Who is she? You know, that one who will bring white horses. That one whom we'll go out to meet. That one who will cause us to sing hallelujah when she comes. Who is this one? that tells us, that this song tells us, is worthy of such commotion. Well, it turns out that this song that most of us know as a children's song was actually first an African-American spiritual long before it ever ended up with companions like I'm a Little Teapot and Yankee Doodle Dandy. The spiritual, though, as you might imagine, had slightly different words than the version which kids sing today. In fact, the first version of that spiritual went like this. Oh, who will drive the chariot when she comes? But again, we might ask, what chariot? Well, whoever wrote this spiritual decided that why not that if Jesus was going to return on the last day, well then why might he not drive a chariot to come and get his people? After all, it's what he had done with his prophet Elijah many, many years ago. So the she in that song is actually the chariot itself, that chariot that was coming to get God's people on the last day. And the answer to that song's question about who would be driving that chariot was then answered in the next verse. O King Jesus, he'll be driving when she comes. As you see, that whole song originally was about Jesus coming back to get his people, coming to make, or coming to fulfill every promise he had made about his return. In both versions, of course, there, though, is that one phrase that is repeated over and over again. When she comes, when she comes, when she comes. As we gather here today, the church calendar draws to an end. And it draws its year to an end nearly a month before the regular calendar does the same. And being that it is the last Sunday in the church year, our text focuses us in on the last day's period, that final day when Christ will return. And so in one way, it is only appropriate that as our text direct our attention to the last day, we might kind of hum or sing in our mind quietly yet repeatedly, when she comes, when she comes, when she comes. Or or to put the driver more literally before the cart, we maybe should sing when he comes. When he comes, when he comes. For while we are not promised a chariot, we are promised Jesus himself, that he will return on that day. Usually each week we have three readings that are assigned to us for a Sunday in the church year. But on this Sunday there's actually three readings, the ones that were printed on your insert assigned. Uh, Then there's three more alternate readings that can be considered as well. I'd like to draw your attention to one of those other readings as well. Hear the words of Revelation 1. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail. On account of him, even so. Amen. Now, of course, those words pair very well with the readings that we did hear for this Sunday. 
and in particular the reading that we just heard again from Mark chapter 13, where we found these words. And they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Yes, of course, all the scriptures agree on what will happen on that last day. This time when Jesus comes, it will not be a humble arrival in a manger like last time, but instead this appearance will be filled with power and with glory. Surely that's why whoever wrote that old spiritual decided that the ancient equivalent of a tank, the chariot, might be the proper ride for Jesus to cruise down those clouds back to earth. Yes, that day will be filled with glory and power. So much so that no one will have to go to some little humble town like Bethlehem if they wish to see Jesus. No, instead we are told that every last tribe of people, no matter how far or close from the promised land they are, will see Jesus at once when he returns. And so we sing, when he comes, when he comes, when he comes. We sing because we know how Jesus will come, with power, with glory, from the clouds. But we do not know the day. Oh, sure, there are signs that alert us to his coming. But indeed, those signs have appeared in every generation to lesser and greater degrees. And those signs, Jesus made clear, are never meant to be able to make us be able to pinpoint the exact day or the hour that Christ shall return. No, not even the angels or the Son of Man knew that date, and neither will we. And surely God has arranged things this way on purpose. You see, he wants us to always be ready for his return, and so he does not reveal the time. For if he knew that he told us, you know, that it was going to happen in three months, that we'd probably do nothing until about three months, so then think we should get ready and prepare. But God wants us always to be ready, and so he tells us that we are to be on guard, that we are to watch with Christ. Yes, Jesus has always told us what he will do on that last day, but he has not told us when it will be. And therefore, there is no day that is not appropriate for singing when he comes, when he comes, when he comes. Yes, we are to be ready, for he will come that day with power and with glory. And the power and glory that Jesus has on that day, he will use for two very different purposes. He will use that same power and glory both to save and to damn. Yes, God's tribe of people, so to speak, will rejoice on that day because they are saved. But those who did not receive his mercy from those other tribes, well, they will not rejoice on that day in fact, that reading from Revelation says that on that day they will wail or they will mourn because they will realize that they have been cut off from God forever. And so, yes, to be ready for Christ's return is critical. One does not want to be on the wrong side of this equation, so to speak. No, we wish to see the white horses with joy rather than be trampled under foot in defeat. We wish to sing hallelujahs that day instead of having to wail in agony. We wish to rejoice that Jesus the judge has come to save us, to set all things right, rather than meeting a wrathful judge who passes out an eternal sentence on those who rejected him. And so, yes, we are to be on guard and to be on guard is simply to watch in faith with Christ. In one of the services in our hymnal, which we rarely use, called Compline, there is this beautiful line. The whole service is meant to be something that is sung right before bedtime. But hear these words. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ 
and that asleep we may rest in peace. Yes, to be ready for when Christ comes, when he comes, when he comes, is simply to watch with Christ, with Christ in his church. It is to turn away daily from sin and to turn to that one and only person that can truly ready us for that day. It is to wait with Christ. It is to wait with his people. It is to wait in his church for the promises to be fulfilled. So don't forget that he is coming. Soon he will be seen around the mountain, so to speak, as the clouds deliver him to our sight. And who knows? Maybe he will come on a chariot that day. But regardless of what he's driving, he will be the one driving the whole event. So don't forget that he's coming. For otherwise you might simply grow complacent and wander away from Jesus thinking that you've got time to come back. For such a move is doubly dangerous. It's dangerous in one sense because you might not really have the time that you think that you have. And secondly, it's dangerous because most who wander off from Christ simply fall asleep spiritually. And Christ warns that those who are spiritually asleep on the day of his return, well, those people will wail and not rejoice. So let us tarry no longer. But return to Christ our Lord, that we might alertly watch with him for the last day. Let us return to Jesus and be truly prepared for the day when he comes, when he comes, when he comes. For today he wishes to welcome you back to his side again. He wishes to clean you up with the forgiveness of sins he won for you at the cross and at the tomb. He wishes to wake you from any spiritual slumber that you have slipped into through his enlivening spirit. What a good and gracious God we have, that he wishes for us and for all people to be awake on the day of his return that we might rejoice with him. So then, as our text said, to him who loves us and who has freed us from our sins by his blood and who has made us a kingdom, priests to God and Father, To him be glory forever and ever. Yes, indeed. Power and glory be to him both today and when he comes, when he comes, when he comes. Amen.